Denley 141 sets Kent up for charge to victory. It's been a low-scoring, fast-moving affair at Edgebaston over the first two days of this contest. Momentum has toed and froed between the hosts and the visitors. Kent slightly in front at the halfway stage, four down in their second innings, but with a lead of 138 already. But the anticipated third day finish looked less likely when almost half of the day was lost to the weather. But Cox and Denley's rhythm wasn't defected. Both men just as composed as they had been when they left the middle. And their stand was worth 100 of 183 balls when they did finally get going. As the total and lead grew, Cox went to 50, scored off 96 and reached with a single off Hannon Dolby. And Joe Denley was soon raising the bat as well. His ton came from 183 balls. It had given Kent a really good chance now of forcing a win, even if they probably would have to wait until the fourth day. Warwickshire was struggling for opportunities. The lead over 200 soon enough, and the Bears had yet to pick up another wicket. When they headed off for tea, the score was now 294 for four, and Kent led by 234. They moved to score past 300, but Cox would fall soon after, outcaught by Rhodes off Briggs for 79. And then Denley would follow, his return a potentially match-winning 141, when Sibley juggled but grasped the chance in the slips. Miles had another, the leader gettable 262, and Billings was caught behind for seven. Henry and Milnes pushed the score up to 360, and the lead 300, when bad light intervened. Not what Kent wanted on their hunt for a second win of the season, but the delay was brief, and Warwickshire were the beneficiaries. Henry outbowled by Briggs for 26. Milnes would fall to Briggs too, caught by Sibley for 20. Quinn's first ball six would be the last shot of the innings. Kent declared on 384 for nine, their lead 324, and there were a few overs left in the day to try and pick up some quick wickets. Joe Denley had led them to a strong position with his 141. The only downside to the innings was the time lost to the inclement weather. Briggs' late showing with the ball had seen him finish with three for 54. Warwickshire were chasing 325 to win, but Davis and Sibley were more concerned in avoiding any damage before the close. They couldn't succeed in that goal. Siney removed Davis for four, a top edge through to Billings. Just what Kent wanted after less than two overs. The score was up to 28 when Benjamin followed, chapped in front by Henry for nine. The day brought to an end with the fall of the wicket. It was just the start Kent needed, a real blow to the Bears' hopes of chasing down the target. They'll need 297 more if they want to win this, but Kent are in pole position. Just eight more wickets of a batting lineup that's looked pretty fragile this week stand between them and a second win of the season.